Okay, so all of you will now see the, the rage on map that I've created in front of you. And this radial map um, has taken a normal mind map <coughs> and separated it into segments. And I'm going to use that to focus on these the different features. So the first one I'm going to focus on is feeling out of control. So working from home means that suddenly your workspace and your living space um, is no longer separated. And that can leave you feeling um, overwhelmed. Um, overstimulated, um, you, know, you might find that you're working on the wrong things for too long, um, you might find it difficult to create boundaries between you know, your workspace and your normal living space and you, know, you, you may find you're becoming more reactive as you know, people, your, your colleagues, your manager may not be able to see what you're working on and they start sending you things you know, left, right and centre which can be difficult um, to manage. So what I'm going to be showing you now is how you can use the planner to take back that control. So even when you're being sent tasks and you have different things to do, um, that you can prioritize your own space. So this is the home page, and we're going to move over to the planner by clicking here. You can also click on the menu and click on my planner here. So the planner opens up your own workspace and where you can prioritize the different things you're working on. So if you're working um, in a team and your manager is delegating you different tasks, um, you can use this workspace to just organize what your own priorities are. So if I click on unplanned tasks, this will show me all the tasks that I'm assigned to across all the different task boards. And I can drag and drop in here exactly what I want to focus on. So I can just drag and drop. So I've picked a few tasks that I want to focus on today. And I can have a look at this list and decide, well, actually, this is at the top of my list. This isn't that important. I can put that in soon. You know, th this is, this I would ideally like to happen today, but it's not at the top of my list, so I can put it into next. And suddenly I've got a much clearer idea of what I need to get done now, what I can do next, and what are tasks which are low priority. And by using this space, it just makes it, um, you know, le less overwhelming than um, trying to go through all the different task boards, all those different meetings. And this creates a workspace which is just for you and sorting out your own priorities. Um, so what you could also do is you know, mind map um, to work out um, what you need to get done that week. So for example, I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to create a mind map. Create a blank mind map here. I'm just going to keep it simple and just use color here. And I can use the mind map to start brainstorming, you know, what I've got to get done. So for example, we can have have leftover tasks you could break it up into morning noon delay And from here, you can start brainstorming you know, what do you actually need to do and what do you need to prioritize. So, for example, you, know, you may have things which are left over from last week and you could perhaps work out, you know, does this need to be done today or you know, does this need to be done at a later date?
you can use that mind map just start just to start brainstorming different ideas so if you want to save time you could also uh, use a template example we could have a you could choose a goal setting template I do apologize um, as you may notice I'm working from home so my internet connection isn't as, as amazing as it was um, at our office so occasionally um, I can have some issues so just bear with me a moment but the general idea is that uh, <coughs> it's very easy when you're working from home to become overloaded with lots of tasks that you are trying to juggle all at the same time you know by mind mapping you know you can you know, work out you know, what tasks you actually need to do, you know, what can be delegated to other people rather than trying to juggle everything at the same time and failing. So in that same sort of vein, the next thing I'm going to be looking at is meeting fatigue. So up until March of this year, um, many of you might not have ever have heard of Zoom and now it may be a part of your everyday life and Zoom and other you know, video meeting um, software have been fantastic in keeping you in touch with your team and you know, trying to keep that office um, sort of feeling going um, but it can be exhausting it can be time consuming and it can be very unproductive and many of you might be experiencing zoom fatigue or meeting fatigue so using AOA you can have a think about okay well how can I reduce the amount of meetings that I'm having so does this need to be a meeting is, is sometimes the big question. Do I need this hour meeting or is this just a question I can send over in, you know, in a chat? Um, if you are going to have the meeting, don't let it overrun. Keep it short. You know, th you know a quick 30 minute um, sprint is going to be much more productive than you know, three hours worth of ambling. And think of alternatives. And these are the ones I'm going to have a look at now. So we've introduced a new feature, which is called um, Team Pulse. Um, and that's all about um, communicating, you know, um, company wide, team wide, so that you're not constantly having to um, have these meetings. So you can access Team Pulse using this button. So this is an ultimate feature. And it's designed for teams. So if you have a team subscription where you have multiple people you know, on, on that same subscription, um, they can add a status here and communicate with everyone exactly what they're working on. So for example, you know, we can see that different members of the team here are working on different things. I can add comments. I can focus in on different departments and I can share my own um, daily plan as well. So that way, if you are busy, if you're going to be out of the office, if there are things that you need to focus on, um, you, know, you can communicate all of this here. So rather than having to do constant um, meetings where you're explaining what you're doing, you can just pop it in this status here so that everybody knows you know, what, what you're doing. And you can see um, um, the, the status from the day before as well. So you can see you know, if someone's been working on the same thing for, for quite a while. Um, as an alternative for meetings, you could also use mind mapping as a way to generate ideas and make sure that everyone's voice is heard. So 
So for example, I'm just going to create a speed map, which is a great way of collaborating with different people. And I can now add different people. So if you haven't collaborated with anyone before, uh, just pop their email address in instead and they will get an invitation to sign up to AOA. And now just click create my map. So this time I'm going to use a sticker and I'll create central idea. So you can see now that um, it's not just me on this mind map. I've got a group of different people and all of us can collaborate at the same time in real time. So rather than um, fighting for space on a video call where you might end up talking over yourselves, um, you might not be able to find the time to air your idea and get that idea out there. Um, you, know, you can add all those ideas in, in one place and everyone has an opportunity to communicate their ideas. So, for example, you know, if, if you are the creator of the mind map, you could even outline you know, d different sorts of ideas just to focus it a bit more. And then once you've outlined that, you know, the rest of your team can start contributing ideas. So at the moment, um, these ideas are anonymous. But what you could do at the end of that you know, brainstorming session, if you go up to these settings, got an option here called show creators. As you can see, you can now see the avatar on top of each idea. So that over time, um, you'll be able to see who contributed, you know, which idea. If you've got people who are shy, you know, just turn that off to the end so everyone has the opportunity to create those, you know, contribute those different ideas. So other things you can do, you know, rather than you know, creating an entire meeting over something which just means you're asking someone to do something, you can use our built-in chat instead. So if you go up to this icon here, this it opens up the chat. Just click this bubble to start a new chat. If you've got contacts already there, um, you'll see them listed. So just take the plus or enter in their email address. So I could start a conversation with Rose. And as well as you know, being able to chat with her, I've got this icon here. If I click on that, that will create a new task. So straight away, you know, rather than having to have a really long meeting or conversation about this task that I need to do, I have just sent it to her. And if I need to add extra information, so for example, I could add notes. Can have conversations with her in the comment section.
and you can use the list to even break down that task into smaller manageable chunks as well. And I've saved lots of time here rather than having a really long meeting where I may have come to the same conclusion. So the next thing I'm going to look, look at um, is, is burnout, which is you know, a really easy thing to happen you know, when you're working from home. So you know, basic things you can do outside of AOA are you know, creating boundaries, making sure you're turning off notifications at the end of the day, turn off your work devices, log out and stick to your working hours. Um, you could use AOA you know, for communication, you know, send tasks and delegate your workload rather than trying to do um, anything else. You're um, trying to do everything yourself, which can be really easy to do when you're working from home on your own. You know, and making sure that you contact managers you know, when you're feeling burnt out. So I was thinking about, you know, how would you implement that and, you know, make sure you stick to that. Um, so I've created an example of a self-care board. So this is very simple so far. So I've created three categories so far. So I've got body, mind, and spirit. And in here so far, I've just added a few little, you know, everyday tasks and to make sure that I'm looking after myself and we can do extra little things here to make this easier. So for example, water. Um, when working from home, you can sometimes feel more pressured to stay at your desk for um, a lot longer than maybe you would do if you're in work. You know, if you're in an office, you, know, you might get up every hour and a half you know, to go get a, a cup of tea, go have a drink of water. You might stop for a brief chat with your workmate or when you're working with home these things don't naturally happen um, so you may forget to do basic things you know like uh, hydrate which can really affect your concentration and in the long run um, you know affect um, your work and your mood so what we can do is set this up as a recurring task so I'm going to set a due date for today and then I'm going to, underneath here, change repeats to every day and set due date. And then I'm going to add extra little reminders. So, for example, I'm going to add a reminder for the end of this webinar. Set a reminder there and I'm going to add an image as well just so this stands out so now that I've sent it up as a repeating task if I complete this at the end of the day then it creates a brand new task ready for me to do tomorrow now if I do the same thing with this task, for example, so I'm going to set, set this up for tomorrow. I'm going to repeat this every day. Set that due date. I'm going to add reminders. Make sure that I'm doing this. I can add a little image as well. This is my own board. I 
again, if I, if I complete this, it creates a new task for the next day. So a virtual happy hour, you know, I could create a group chat here. I can add multiple people. To the same group. I can add an image. Create group chats. and stay in touch with my colleagues. Um, so one of the things I've written down here is write down, down concerns. And what I have created here is a worry mind map. So the idea behind this is that rather than letting worries fester, and uh, becoming overwhelmed, you know, mind map those concerns and those issues. Um, and I can even link this back to that task board. So if I click this tick here, this opens tasks. And if I click on this three dot menu, um, I can actually find the task. And there it is. So now this mind map is connected to this task board. So if I'm look, if I open this task and it's write down concerns, you know, I can skip straight to this mind map and start writing down those concerns. So this, this is just an idea of how you might approach it. So, you know, you've got your worry, you know, what's causing that and start mind mapping the solutions and then think about who can help. You know, on that same um, worry mind map, you can map out um, your support network. So, you know, who can help you if you're having issues? Um, so, for example, it could be HR, your line manager, your manager, your colleagues. You know, you can add... Contact details, and perhaps even just the the process of writing down your worries, you know, might help you to work through them yourself. So for example, you know, working through a problem, you know, workload overwhelming, you could start thinking about you know, you know, what has caused this, thinking about how to, how to solve it, or you could start delegating um, you know, some of those overwhelming tasks and who's gonna help you come up with a solution. You know, it, could be, it could be your manager. And you know, now that we've got an idea of what that solution might be, you know, we could create a task so that you know that you need to have this, you need to have this conversation and to get that done. You know, and, and you could use this for a whole range of things. I mean, you could al al also use this for actual meetings or you know, creative problems that you're trying to overcome as well. And the important thing is amongst all those worries, also take the opportunity to look at what you have done well. So what do you feel good about? What, what successes have you had that week? Just to keep everything in perspective and to make sure you don't become too 
overwhelmed and too hard on yourself or you know things that you feel may not be going that well So the big thing that I pr think we've probably all experienced is information overload. Now, someone in the Q&A has actually made a really good um, point, uh, which I'd like to share with you if, if you haven't seen it. Um, but he has suggested, if we go back to the planner, is that he says he's found it um, really useful to limit now column to just one task at a time, which is a really brilliant advice. So you can see, you know, already you know, that column is much less overwhelming. And as things get ticked off, you, know, you can add the next task in. So thank you for that um, tip. Um, you know, I, I think that's a really useful one to, to share with everyone. Um, so it was, uh, one of the advice that I gave you earlier was keeping meetings to 30 minutes. So um, I think I shared quite a lot of different you know, ideas and information with you. So what I'm going to do now is open up the floor to you. Um, so if you have any questions or if you have you know, any suggestions that you think would help anyone, um, you know, do let us know. Um, and I'll have a look at the other question we've had so far and just keep up uh, this mind map up. Um, you, you can have a look at where else um, you can find information about AOA. Okay, so one question we have is um, using a useful structure or template for a mind map to empty your head. Okay, so I guess we sort of looked at that in that worry mind map. Um, I, do, I do know what you mean. Um, when it comes to mind mapping, it can be very easy for that information to become messy straight away. Um, so we've actually got a feature that might help you with that a bit. So if you go up to the menu here and click show idea bank, this opens almost like a storage facility to keep your ideas if you're not quite sure where to place them on the mind map. And this is essentially a branch. So what you can do is you, if, you know, if you're having, you know, like a mind dump, um, you know, what, what you've described, you're putting things in the text list, you can add them here instead. And then as your mind map grows and you think, okay, I've, I've got a logical place of where I can put that now, you can just drag and drop that on that branch on your mind map. Um, so that you don't lose that idea, you don't become overwhelmed by that idea. Um, but you know, you're not losing it. Um, so the idea bank is, uh, per mind map. Um, but you could maybe have a, let's say, almost like an index mind map perhaps which you could use to just you know write down your ideas um if you don't know you know where exactly you want to put them um you, know, you could literally have a mind map called you know your your mind dump where you, you add that extra information in there um, because you can type and search you know through that list as it gets bigger so it's not won't be too difficult um, to find that idea as time goes on and you can also choose you know whether you keep those ideas to yourself or whether you want to share them with everyone um, on that mind map so if you're not quite sure where to start um, if you're really new to mind mapping um, on the pro and ultimate 
um, packages. Um, we do have templates. And we've got a couple of ones to choose from um, here. So they vary from templates which are focused more in education, um, you know, some more focused on business, um, some are, you know, everyday, um, you know, for personal kind of projects. And as time goes on, you can actually also um, build your own templates as well. So for example, if I wanted to create a template from this one, um, all I would need to do is go up to the cog here and click create template from mind map. And create my template. And that way, if, if you find a structure that really works for you, you know, you can then you know, create a template based on that structure and, and use it again and again. So if I go back to the home page now, if I click on speed map and choose template, if I go down to the bottom, you'll see that you know, these are templates that I've made earlier. And right, right at the bottom there, we've got worry mind map, which is the mind map um, I've just turned into a template. So I, I, I hope that is helpful. Um, while I'm waiting for other questions, I'm just going to go over um, the different resources we have. So we have a huge amount of support guides over at support.aoa.com. So that covers all the different platforms. Um, including the web app, iPhone, iPad, and Android. Um, on our YouTube channel, um, we have videos and we also have uh, recordings of the previous webinars we've had. So if there are features that you want to look at in more depth, for example, mind mapping or radial map or the task boards, uh, we've got webinars which focus on, on that, um, which you'll find really helpful. And then if you've got any additional questions, um, you can email us at support at aoa.com. So we do webinars on a weekly basis. So I believe next week we are back to um, getting started at, um, with AOA. So if you were looking for um, a more general overview of AOA, um, you know, that could be a good one for you. And if you know anyone, you know, have any colleagues who are maybe getting started with AOA, but they haven't quite got the hang of it yet, um, that would be a great one for them. So that'll be the same time on the 5th of August. Uh, we're still working on lots of new features, um, a lot of them inspired by having to work remotely for the last couple of months. So we're bringing out a Zoom integration. Um, we've been working on lots of new languages. So the last few months we've brought out um, Korean, Japanese and French, and we've got a lot more to come as well. Um, and the next big release um, will be the Zoom integration, along with lots of um, little, little improvements um, to the mind mapping features as well. Okay, it looks like, looks like there aren't any more questions, but if anything comes to you after this webinar, um, then just email us at support at um, and we'll be happy to answer. Uh, we'll be sending out a recording of this webinar uh, probably tomorrow morning um, and we'll be making it available on YouTube as well for anyone who wasn't able to attend. So um, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to join me today. Um, I hope you found this useful and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>